Hey guys, my name's Curtis and this is my wife Chelsea. We make weekly videos about travel, photography, and sometimes we make videos about our little Bengal kitty Kona that everyone seems to love. <laughs> so about a month ago, Chelsea and I bought the Sony ZV-1. After all the hype that came out about this camera, we started to do our own research on which camera setup was gonna be best and encourage us to vlog more often. In the last month now, we've had the opportunity to film a couple of videos on this and take some photos to get to really know this camera better. We've really started to like this camera and we've really done some thinking on who this camera's for. So let's get started. The first thing that needs to be said about this camera is that it's really an all-in-one point-and-shoot camera for vlogging and making YouTube videos. If someone were to ask me what camera I should buy to make my first YouTube videos under $1,000, it would for sure be this camera. Simply because if you don't have a big budget, you don't really need to buy anything extra for this camera. Normally for every other camera, you're gonna have to buy a camera and then you're gonna at least have to buy a microphone to get good audio out of it. Fortunately on the ZV-1, they have a directional microphone included and it also comes with this little windscreen on top as well and it's all contained inside this little package so it's super compact. This mic on this camera actually sounds really good and is much better than any other camera or cell phone out there already. Now some might say that this is the downside of the camera but in our opinion it's actually a positive and that's that the camera has a fixed lens. No, you can't change the lenses or upgrade lenses like you could with other higher-end cameras. However, this lens is great and goes down to a 1.8 aperture. And for convenience, the lens shrinks down inside the camera so you can actually do things like stick it in your pocket. When Chelsea and I are out and about, run and gun shooting, and we're out vlogging, especially with Kona, <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of time. And it can kind of get frustrating when we're out filming with our Sony a7 III, for example. When we're vlogging, it's just bigger, it's heavier, we need to plug a mic in. The biggest pain is that it doesn't have a fully articulating screen like this one. So a lot of the times we have to put a mirror on the back or something, or just guess what we're doing. And then it kind of takes you out of the moment, and you're not thinking about vlogging, you're thinking about camera settings which isn't ideal. Now, I'm not saying that we don't like our a7 III. Love it, it. <laughs> it does provide a better picture overall because it is a full frame sensor. It's better in low light. It's good for some situations, but if you're just like out and about and you want to nail whatever you're filming, this thing is literally foolproof. It's a true point and shoot. Now, again, when it comes to vlogging with the Sony camera, there are a lot of positives about it, but let's say it's Saturday night and we're going to go out quickly and go for a walk or go for a paddle or something with Kona, link here. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we'll look at our camera system and be like, is it really worth the headache of filming? You gotta worry about all these different things that I worried about before. Now we can literally look at our camera system being the Sony ZV-1 and we can be like, sure, I'll put it in my pocket and take it with us. It's not that big a deal. This is one of the cameras that actually inspires us to get out there and start vlogging more often. The hardest part about vlogging is to capture something in the moment so that you actually get that real emotion. When you're yanking out a huge camera system and now you don't have a lens that's wide enough to get the whole setting in or something like that, you end up missing the whole thing and it loses a lot of the story. The great thing about this DB1 is that we've always been able to capture the story because it's handy and from the moment you hit the on button, it nails everything. Who just said an anecdotal story in one take? This chick did. So now the reasons why this camera is so easy to shoot with is first the autofocus. Sony has nailed the autofocus <laughs> on this camera and it's literally impossible to miss focus. Once you put it up to your face like this, it is just stuck right on your face. You don't have to think about it at all and you can just turn it on and you're ready to go. So typically with most cameras, even with your cell phone, when you're shooting on auto, the camera will expose for the brightest area of the frame, which can leave your face darkened. However, with this camera, the exposure setting will actually expose to your face rather than the background. Like we said, when we're vlogging on manual, sometimes it can kind of take you out of the moment and you're no longer present in the video and the story. Your mind is elsewhere thinking about the camera settings. We don't have a flip screen, so that really leaves us in the dark. Having auto everything that actually works makes it so easy just to press record, start filming, and forget about everything else and just be in the moment. 
these two things kind of go in hand with the last point, but having a flip screen is friggin' amazing <laughs> after not having one so long with our Sony a7 III, which we're filming on right now. You can't turn the screen towards you, so you can't see the framing, you can't see if you're in focus, you can't see the exposure, you can't see anything. What Sony has also done is added this little record light on the front, so even though you have the flip screen, if for some reason that you have it both ways, you can still see that you're recording. It's simple, but it makes such a difference. No matter where we're going, we can vlog with confidence. When we're in public and taking it out, nobody really seems to care. We just kind of look like cheesy tourists, which is perfect. No one knows that we're vlogging. I said when Kurt has it out and he's doing his little thing, he just looks like a dad with his point and shoot camera out. We have our Sony a7 III out with a mic on top and sometimes a mirror. It's just this big, huge thing. It looks like a big production. So you kind of look like a knob. <laughs> You're making but a scene everywhere you go. <laughs> when you just have this little thing, it makes it much more inconspicuous and most people just think, like Chelsea said, you're just a cheesy tourist, which is perfect. Yeah. I've never been confident filming in an airport before, and we filmed two airport videos with this thing with ease. Filming in the airports is actually the worst. <laughs> Everyone's looking at you all the time. It's so quiet. It's <laughs> terrible. There are a lot of features of this camera that we're actually just skimming over, like the fact that it does time lapses. It's good in low light. It has a product mode, which means when you hold things up to the camera, it does that autofocus really quickly. It has color profiles like all of the other Sony cameras. It does background defocusing. The list just goes on and on and on. However, there really isn't just one feature that is better on this camera that's better on other cameras. It's the combination of all these little features that truly makes this an easy to use and fun camera. I think what all of these little things boil down to and what makes it so great is that it's the best storytelling camera. However, like every camera, it's not 100% perfect. Literally, the one thing that I would like to change on this is the focal length. If Sony could just make this a 16 millimeter equivalent rather than a 24, it would literally be perfect. For us, we just have to make sure that we hold it as far away from our face as possible when we're out vlogging. It's not ideal, but literally, I don't know if there's another point and shoot camera out there that has a 16 millimeter lens with all these other features anyway. So that's something that's, in my opinion, it's pretty minor and can be overlooked and there is a way around it. It's just a little something that maybe they can improve on next time. So to sum all of this up, when you're looking for a vlogging camera, this is literally the camera that does it all for under a thousand dollars. You can literally buy this camera, open the box and start filming your first YouTube video today. However, we still recommend that you do your own research and find what camera's best for you. Regardless of what we say or what anyone else says, it's your hard earned money that you're spending. So make sure you do your own research. But in our opinion, if you're looking for a camera that you can take anywhere, that's easy to use, that's budget friendly, and you're looking for a camera that will make you want to film more often, I think you know what our recommendation is gonna be. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment below. We love seeing them. We literally answer every single comment, so please leave a comment if you have any questions. <laughs> if you thought this video was helpful, please hit that like button. And if you wanna hang out with us again next week, please hit that subscribe button. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.